In this video, we're going to solve some one-dimensional kinematics problems. So we'll start with this one. You have a number line indicating your position, and it says you run from point X to point Y to point Z in four seconds. What is your average velocity over this period of time? So we'll start by writing down the formula for average velocity moving in the X direction. So this is just our displacement in X, delta X over our change in time. And so our total change in x, well if we go from x to y, then we have one meter, the positive x direction, and then we go another five meters, so one plus five, and that took us a total of four seconds. So this will give us six meters in total in four seconds. And if you punch that in, that will give you one and a half meters per second. So the next problem, a football quarterback runs 15 meters straight down the playing field in two and a half seconds. He is hit and pushed three meters straight backward in 1.75 seconds. He breaks a tackle and runs straight forward another 21 meters in 5.2 seconds. Calculate his average velocity for each interval and then for the entire motion. So again, start with part A. In the first interval, write down the definition, the formula for average velocity. We're going to assume he's running um, in the x direction. So this is the change in x, so the change in time. And so in the first interval, he runs. 15 meters, the positive x direction, and that takes him two and a half seconds. Okay, so if you punch that in, you get six meters per second. If we do the next one, same formula, delta x over delta t. Well, here he goes three meters but he goes backward so that's the negative x direction so minus three meters and it takes him 1.75 seconds punch that in we get minus 1.71 meters per second and this minus sign just tells us he's moving backward or in the minus x direction And for the last interval, we have the same formula, delta x over delta t. And he's going forward again, and he goes 21 meters, so a positive 21 meters, and it takes him 5.20 seconds. Plug this in, and you should get 4.04 .04 meters per second. Okay, and now for part b. We want the um, average velocity for the entire motion. So first we need to know how far he goes in total. So he went a positive 15 meters, and then he went back 3 meters, and he went forward again 21 meters. So his total change in position will be 33.0 meters. And then the total time he was moving, well, it took two and a half seconds for the first motion, and then another 1.75 seconds, and finally 5.2 seconds. So in total, he was running 9.45 seconds. And if we do our average velocity formula for the entire motion, we take his total change in position or displacement over his total time, so 33 over 9.45. And on average, he was going 3.5 meters per second. And it's positive, so that was in the positive x direction. OK, we have another problem. A cheater can accelerate from rest to a speed of 30 meters per second and a time of 7.0 seconds. What is its acceleration? So first off, it gave us some information. 
it's starting from rest, so that tells us, again, we're going to assume we're working in the x direction, its initial velocity is zero, so that's what this tells us. And then he speeds up, and some later time he's going 30 meters per second, so that's our final velocity. 30 meters per second. We got that right here. And it gave us the time that it takes. So t equals 7.00 seconds. And it's always good to know what you're looking for. So you're looking for the acceleration, in this case, in the x direction. Okay. So for this problem, I'm going to write all of my kinematic equations. And we're going to pick which one we want to use. So I'll just write them all. X equals x naught plus v naught x. V squared. <coughs> so we're looking for ax. So all of these equations have our acceleration. Um, we don't know anything about delta x, so we don't know where you started and where you ended up. So we don't want this or this, we don't want this. So that means we probably want to use this top equation. It has everything that we know, so we have vx, v naught x, and time. And we're looking for ax, so this equation will do. So vx equals v naught x plus axt. And anytime you have something that is zero, so in this case v naught x, it'll make our lives easier if we just go ahead and get rid of it. So now we solve this for ax. So in order to do that, we need to divide by time on both sides. That'll leave us with ax by itself. So vx over t. And now we're ready to plug in. So 30 meters per second in seven seconds. And so it was accelerating at 4.3 meters per second squared. But okay, we have another problem. The commuter backs her car out of her garage with an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared. And the first thing we want to find is how long it takes, uh, or how long does it take her to reach a speed of two meters per second? So first I'm going to write what I know. She is accelerating at 1.4 meters per second squared. Okay, that's here. And she eventually reaches a speed. So if you reach a speed, it's talking about some after some amount of time. So after some amount of time, her final velocity is 2 point zero meters per second and now we can assume just from the context of the situation that when she was in her garage before she started moving she was at rest so before she started accelerating she was at rest so she was initially uh, moving at zero meters per second and then we're looking for how long it's going to take so we're looking for time so this is going to use the same kinematic equation as before. If we just write it, anytime we can use this, the shortest of our equations we want to, it has all three things that we have, ax, vx, and v naught x, and we're looking for time. So I'm going to put v naught x equal to zero to make our life easy. Solve for time. So to do that, we need to divide by ax on both sides. Get this out of the way. That's going to go away, and we have time equals Vx over Ax. So now if we plug in, we have 2 meters per second over 1.4 meters per second squared. And this gives us a time of 1.43 seconds. Okay, so this is part A. For part B, it says if she then breaks should be then. If she then breaks to a stop in 0.8 seconds, what is her deceleration? Okay. So now it's giving us a time of 
0 0.8 seconds. She's still going the same speed, but now she's starting at 2 meters per second. And she's going to stop, so that means at some later time her final velocity will be 0. And we want to find acceleration or deceleration. Okay. So again, we have um, we still have three things in this equation. So we can still use it to solve for what we want. We have three of the four and we're looking for the other thing. And this time, let me plug in Vx equals zero. And I want to solve for Ax. So I'm going to subtract V naught x from both sides. It's going to go away. So I get Ax t equals minus V naught x. I'll need to divide by time. Go away. We get Ax equals minus V naught x over t. So this is minus 2 meters per second over 0 0.8 seconds. And that gives us a minus 2.5 meters per second squared. And this is negative, but that just means that she is decelerating. So that's OK. OK, an Olympic class sprinter starts a race with an acceleration of 4.5 meters per second squared. So AX is 4.5 meters per second squared. What is her speed 2.4 seconds later? So we are at a time of 2.40 seconds. We want to find her speed. And so we can assume that when you start a race before the race starts, you're not moving. So your initial velocity or initial speed is zero. Okay. And so if we go to our kinematic equations. Again, we have three of the four things in this equation. And we're looking for the other, and we're starting from rest, so v naught x goes away. And now we just have vx equals ax times t, and we're ready to plug in. So 4.5 meters per second squared times 2.40 seconds. And after that much time, they're running at 10.8 meters per second. So in part b, we want to sketch the graph of this motion. It's a function of time. Before I do this, I'm going to write the formula for average velocity. So average velocity is delta x over delta t in the x direction. Well, this is this can be written as x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1. And so what this tells us is that our velocity looks like the slope of our position versus time graph. Because this is the formula for slope. So if our velocity starts off at zero, then our slope on this graph should start at zero. And then we're accelerating. So that means our velocity should increase. So our slope should increase as we move through time. And then we do this for 2.4 seconds. And if we wanted to, we could figure out which position this corresponds to. And we could do that just by using one of our other kinematic equations. Okay. So if we say we start at 0 and we're not moving initially, we know how much time we took. Uh, we know our acceleration. So we know everything in here to figure out how far we are 
after 2.4 seconds. So if we wanted to get this exact, we could do that. But this is roughly what the position versus time graph should look like. Okay, a bullet in a gun is accelerated from the firing chamber to the end of the barrel at an average rate of 6.2 times 10 to the fifth meters per second squared for 8.1 times 10 to the minus four seconds. What is its muzzle velocity or final velocity when it leaves the chamber? So we're given the acceleration, 6.2 times 10 to the fifth meters per second squared and it accelerates for a time, 8.1 times 10 to the minus four seconds. Okay, so pretty quick. And it wants to, us to find the final velocity. So another thing that we can assume is before we pull the trigger, before the bullet starts moving, it's at rest. So the initial velocity is zero. So it won't necessarily say that, but we know that that's what happens inside of a gun. So, if we look at our kinematic equations, we have Vx equals V naught x plus Axt. We have, this is what we're looking for, and then we have these three, so we can use this equation. So, first I'll set this equal to zero, we get Vx equals Axt or 6.2 times 10 to the fifth meters per second times 8.1 times 10 to the minus four seconds. And if you plug this in, you should get a velocity of 502 meters per second. Okay, in this problem, in a slap shot, a hockey player accelerates the puck from a velocity of eight meters per second to 40 meters per second in the same direction. If the shot takes 3.33 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds, calculate the distance over which the puck accelerates. So starting from a velocity, initial velocity of 8 meters per second, and it ends at a final velocity of 40 meters per second, does this accelerate in a time 3.33 times 10 to the minus two seconds. And we're looking for delta x. So we don't have any acceleration information. So there are two ways to solve this. Um, well, there may be more. So the first way you can solve this is using this kinematic equation, delta x equals one half vx plus v naught x times t. So this kinematic equation isn't always given um, depending on your physics class. Uh, this just uses the mathematical average, so for average velocity. And you can see you have everything, you have vx, v naught x, and you have time, and you're looking for delta x. So if you just plug in, delta x equals one half um, 40, meters per second plus 8 meters per second times 3.33 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds. If you do all that, you should get 0 0.8 meters. But sometimes you're only given three kinematic equations. If you can use those three, then you can use the other two. But the second way you could do this is first um, I said you didn't have any acceleration information, but you can use what you're given to find the acceleration. So you can use this kinematic equation, Vx equals V naught x plus Axt. And you can solve this for Ax, so we need to move V naught x to the other side. So Vx minus V naught x. And then to get Ax by itself, we divide both sides by t. If you do this, you'll have 40 meters per second minus 8 meters per second over your time. And your acceleration will be 961 meters per second squared. Then you can use one of your other kinematic equations, Vx squared equals V naught x squared 
plus 2ax delta x. And in this case, we're looking for delta x. So to solve for that, again, we have to move um, v not x squared to the other side, so we subtract it. And then you need to divide by this 2ax to get delta x by itself. 2ax. And I won't write those numbers, but if you plug all of those in, again, you'll get 0 0.8 meters. And now that you have acceleration, um, you could use this equation, or um, once you have the acceleration, you could also use this kinematic equation. Okay, because you have v not x, you have time, and you have ax. Okay, so um, you could use this or this once you have found um, your acceleration. Okay. Okay, next problem. Calculate the displacement and velocity at four different times for a ball thrown straight up with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Take the point of release to be y not equals zero. Okay, so we are given an initial velocity and it's thrown straight up, so that's in the y direction. So v not y is positive 15 meters per second. Once it's in the air, it's in only under the influence of gravity, so its acceleration will be minus g, it's in free fall. And then we're given a bunch of different times, um, so we know this. And we're asked to find the displacement and the final velocity at these different times. Okay, so for the displacement, if we go to our kinematic equations, we have delta y equals v naught y times t minus one half g t squared, where we've put in minus g for a y. And then we know the initial velocity and acceleration, and we have a bunch of times. So to find our final velocity, we can use this kinematic equation, vy equals v naught y minus gt. Okay, and we know to use these just because we have everything else in the equation. This is why we write what we're given. And so we know all of these things. And then this is what we're looking for. So that's how we identify our equations. So for part A, if we plug into this equation for delta y, we have 15 meters per second at half a second, minus one half g is 9.8 meters per second squared, and t again is half a second, square that, and we get 6.275 meters. And if we calculate our final velocity, it will be 15 meters per second minus 9.8 meters per second squared for half a second. That's 10.1 meters per second. Okay. Okay, for part B, I won't bother writing all the numbers, but if you plug in to this exact equation, only changing your time, you get a delta Y of 10.1 meters. And your final velocity, again, only changing the time, nothing else. You get 5.2 meters per second. For part C, plugging in one and a half seconds, you get a distance of 11.475 meters and a final velocity of 0 0.3 meters per second. And at two seconds, a distance of 10.4 meters and a velocity of minus 4.6 meters per second. And so what you can see from this problem is 
this ball was thrown up and it goes up and we can see the distance growing so it goes from 6.275 meters up to 10 up to 11 and a half and then it starts to come back down and then our speed starts to decrease as we throw it up because gravity is pulling it down and eventually it will stop and turn around and start going the other way and our velocity becomes negative. Next problem, a basketball referee tosses the ball straight up for the starting tip off. At what velocity must a basketball player leave the ground to rise 1.25 meters above the floor in an attempt to get the ball? So we're given our y distance, so delta y is 1.25 meters above the floor. Once the basketball player leaves the ground, he is now under the influence of gravity or in free fall, so his acceleration is minus g in the y direction. And we're looking for his initial velocity, but one thing that we know is when he jumps this 1.25 meters, when he gets to the top, his velocity in the y direction is going to be zero. Okay. So if we write our kinematic equation, vy equals v not y minus gt. Actually, I'm going to write them all so we can figure out which one we want to use. Delta y equals v not y t minus one half gt squared, and vy squared equals v not y squared minus 2g delta y. Okay, so we're looking for v not y, but this this one has v not y, but we don't know time, so we can't use it. Same thing for the second equation, we don't know anything about our time, so we can't use it. So we want to use this kinematic equation, and we want to solve for v not y. So I'm going to go through that algebra since sometimes we don't do it. But first, Vy is going to be zero. So Vy, V not Y squared um, equals positive 2G delta Y. Okay, so I just moved this over to the other side. Now to solve for V not Y, I need to take the square root of both sides. Square root of 2G delta Y square root is going to undo this square and we're left with v not y square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared and our delta y is 1.25 meters okay and if we plug that in we get 4.95 meters per second Great. okay next problem calculate the height of a cliff if it takes 2.35 seconds for a rock to hit the ground when it is thrown straight up from the cliff with an initial velocity of 8 meters per second. And then we're going to find out how long it takes if we were to throw it down with the same speed. Okay. So for some problems like this, I like to draw just a little picture, have some idea of what's going on. So we throw this rock straight up, it's going to go up, and then it's going to come down and hit the ground. So we're on some cliff. Has some initial y component of velocity. Okay, so we're given the time, 2.35 seconds, given v not y, positive 8 meters per second. And again, once the rock is thrown up, it's now under the influence of gravity, it's in free fall, so acceleration in the y direction is minus g. And we're looking for the height of the cliff. So first we need to find delta y. And then we know that the rock's going to have to go down. So we're going to get a negative number for our displacement in the y direction and our height will just be the absolute value of that. Okay. So for our kinematic equations we can use this equation, delta y equals v not y times t minus one half gt squared. So we're given time and we're given the initial velocity. 
So if we plug into this, eight liters per second times 2.35 seconds minus one half, 9.8 meters per second squared and 2.35 seconds squared, we get a distance of minus 8.26 meters. And we expect something negative being thrown off a cliff so this negative sign just means it is going down, okay, or the minus y direction. So that's perfectly fine. And our height will just be the absolute value of this. So the height of the cliff, not negative, is positive 8.26 meters. Okay. And then for part B, we want to know how long would it take to reach the ground if it is thrown down at the same speed. So it took 2.35 seconds being thrown up. And now we are changing our um, initial y component of velocity. So now instead of positive 8 meters per second, we're going to throw it down. So minus 8 meters per second. It is still in free fall, so we still have minus g for our acceleration. And now we know the displacement in y, so it's minus, it's going down 8.26 meters. And this time we're not given time, we're looking for time. Okay, so there are a couple of ways to do this. One way would be to use this equation delta y equals v naught y times t minus one half gt squared. But since we're looking for time, and we have a t and a t squared, to do it this way, we would need to use a quadratic equation. So that is one option. And you can do it in one step, but it takes a little bit longer, and you have to be careful with your signs. Another way to do it would be to use um, your other kinematic equations, but now you have to do it in two different steps. Okay, so instead of doing it this way, I'm going to use this equation, and I'm going to use this to find my final velocity when it hits the ground. And then once I have that, I can use a third kinematic equation to solve for the time really easily. Okay, so this is going to be an intermediate step. Okay, so in order to solve for vy, I need to take the square root of both sides. So when I do that, I get a plus or minus in front of this. And this just means if we take whatever answer we get here, whether it's negative or positive, if we square it, we'll get um, vy squared. So we know that our velocity when we hit the ground is going to be, we know it's going to be going down. So we're going to take the negative solution. So this is minus 8 meters per second, all squared, minus 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared, and a minus 8.26. It's important to put that minus sign in for your delta y. And if we do that, we will get a, I don't want to put this, final velocity of minus 15 meters per second. Okay. Once we have this, we can go to our short kinematic equation. Now we know v naught y and v y. And we obviously know the value of g, so we can solve for time. So if we do that, we'll get vy minus v naught y all over g. And if we plug in those values, save space. So minus 15 meters per second for vy. Maybe I'll just do it. Minus um, a minus 8. I'll leave off the meters per second since I don't have room. Divide by 9.8. Um, oh, this should be a minus sign too. 
a minus 9.8 meters per second, you'll get a time of 0 0.7 seconds. Okay, so this is something you get using the quadratic equation as well. Here you have to do two steps, and so it's a little bit longer, but the steps are, are easier. There's just more of them. Okay, but you should try using the quadratic equation and show that you get the same thing. So one more problem. A kangaroo can jump over an object that is 2.5 meters high. Calculate its vertical speed when it leaves the ground and how long it is in the air. So it can jump a height or delta y of 2.5 meters. Once the kangaroo jumps in the air, it's under the influence of gravity, so it's in free fall. Its acceleration is minus g. And this is talking about its maximum, um, the max height that it can jump. So when the kangaroo gets to the top of his jump, his, he stops going up and his y component of velocity is zero meters per second. So this is true at the top of the jump. Okay, when you stop going up. Okay, so now we're looking for the initial velocity is jumping up, so it's in the y direction. So for part A, we can use this equation, vy squared equals v not y squared minus 2g delta y. And one way we immediately go to this equation, we know to go to this equation, is because we don't have time. Both of our other kinematic equations have time, so if, we, if we're not given the time and we're looking for velocity, uh, this is typically a good place to start. Notice that if you do quite a few of these problems. Our final velocity at the top is zero, so now we just need to solve for v not y. So I'm gonna move minus 2g to uh, delta y to the other side to make it positive. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides plug in 2 times 9.8, 2.5 meters, I get an initial speed of 7 meters per second. Okay, now we want to find how long it is in the air. Okay, so you can do this two different ways. I'm going to do both of them. So can use this kinematic equation, delta y equals v not y times t minus one half gt squared. Normally this would be quadratic, however, if we jump up and land at the same height, our delta y is zero. And so if we move this to the other side to make it positive, we get v not y, actually I think it's one half gt squared equals v not y times t. Since we have a t on both sides, we can divide by t, and this the t on the right will go away, the t squared will go down to t. And then we multiply by 2 over g on both sides to get rid of this. And you're left with t equals 2 v naught y over g. So 2 times 7 meters per second over 9.8 meters per second squared, and we get 1.4 seconds, okay? Or another option that we can do is we know that Vy is zero at the top. So we can use Vy equals V not Y minus GT, but if we're using the fact that Vy is zero at the top, then this time is the time, sorry, to the max height. It is not the total time in the air. So the time to max height would be V naught Y over G, or seven meters per second over 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is 0 0.71 seconds. And since it spends the same amount of time on the way down as it does the way up, 
to get the total time, we just need to double the time to max height, or 2 times 0 0.71, and you get 1.4, um, not meters, 1.4 seconds. Another problem, a coin is dropped from a hot air balloon that is 300 meters above the ground and rising at 10 meters per second upward. For the coin, find the maximum height reached, its position and velocity four seconds after being released, and the time before it hits the ground. Okay, so let's write everything we know. It's going to start at 300 meters. Um, the coin is moving with the hot air balloon upward, so its initial velocity in the y direction is positive 10 meters per second. It's going to reach max height when its velocity is zero meters per second. Okay, so at max height. And once it's released, it is under the influence of gravity, so it is in free fall. Its acceleration is minus g. And we're looking for its final height or max height when this is true. Okay, for the maximum height reached, we can use this equation, by squared equals b not y squared minus 2g. And then instead of writing delta y, I'm going to write y minus y not. You guys should write it the same way. Okay, and we know vy is 0 at the top. So now I need to solve for y. So I'm going to move this to the other side and get 2g y minus delta uh, y naught equals v naught y squared. Then I'm going to go into divide by 2g. Get y minus y naught equals v naught y squared over 2g. And then I just need to add y naught to both sides. And I get y equals v naught y squared over 2g plus y naught. So that will give me 10 meters per second all squared over 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared plus my initial 300 meters. And the max height is 305 meters. So not doesn't go that much higher. Okay. Okay, so for part B, now we want to find its position and velocity after four seconds of it being released. Okay, so now we're given a time, four seconds, and we want to know its y position and its velocity. So you get the y position by using this equation, y equals y naught plus v naught y t minus one half g t squared. We know v naught y from before. We know y naught, and it just gave us time. So if we plug all that in, 300 meters, 10 meters per second, times four seconds, minus one half, 9.8 meters per second squared and four seconds squared, we get 262 meters. So now it has already reached its max height and now it started to fall again. And it's fallen 200 to 262 meters. If you look at the y component of velocity, you can use this equation. This is 10 meters per second minus 9.8 meters per second squared times 4 seconds. And we get minus 29.2 meters per second. Okay. And now for part C, the time before it hits the ground. Okay, so again, you could use delta y equals v naught y 
t minus 1 half gt squared. But this is going to be quadratic. So I'm going to do it the longer way in case you don't want to use a quadratic equation. Okay. Or you can use by squared equals b not y squared minus 2g delta y and solve for by. So take the square root of all of this. We're going to unplug that in. It's going to be 10 meters per second squared minus 2 times 9.8. And then our delta y is going to be minus 300 meters. That's how far it's dropping in the y direction. And when it hits the ground, it'll be going minus 76.75 meters per second. We then take this kinematic equation, Vy equals V naught Y minus GT. Solve for time. We get Vy minus V naught Y over minus G. And when we plug all of that in, minus 76.75 meters per second, minus a positive 10 meters per second, all over minus G, we get 8.85 seconds to hit the ground.